fake ASMR. There it is. Welcome to Next Level Kitchen, where we're going to show you the tips and recipes that could make you a next level chef. And today, we're going to cook up some amazing pork chops, a classic protein. That's right, there's really nothing quite like pork, and we're going to show you how to take it to the next level by showing you two different ways to make it incredible. But before we start cooking, let's talk about the most important element, oil. I'm making a, a pork schnitzel, and I'm gonna actually shallow or pan fry that in grapeseed oil. I like to use grapeseed oil. Peanut oil is also amazing for frying. Um, and I'm flavoring my grapeseed oil, which is a neutral oil with a pretty fairly high smoke point uh, with some pork fat that I've taken off just from the fat cap of this pork. Listen, whatever you cook your ingredient in is gonna help flavor it, right? So you've added more pork flavor to this by cooking that fat in the oil. Maybe you don't have an extra fat cap of pork laying around but you might have bacon underneath your sink. You can cook in the bacon fat. Or Love like I'm tip. going to do, I'm gonna uh, fry my pork chop in ghee or clarified butter, which has a high smoking point. So I'm gonna get the flavor of butter, but I'm not gonna burn my butter. Okay, so you're Great making tip. a schnitzel. You got some work to do over there, I right? am, so I'm gonna actually start out with uh, the pounding out of the pork. You can totally use a rolling pin or any heavy bottom pot as well. I'm using uh, something called a mallet here. Um, a really fun, great tip if you plan on sort of flattening any protein or vegetable is to use a double-sided cling film. So this is literally just a piece of cling film that I've wrapped on top of itself and then folded in half. And what that's gonna do is give me a nice sturdy base so my plastic cling film doesn't uh, break. And I hate to jump in there, but maybe you're in the basement level and you don't have a mallet, but you have another pan that you can use as a mallet. Absolutely. Never let equipment stop you from doing your 100%. job. 100%. So, uh, yeah, heavy bottom pot, a rolling pin, um, anything that it has a heavy um, weight to it will work great. So today I'm using uh, what is called a mallet. And so... The most important thing when uh, attempting to flatten out any protein is to push away from you, right? So I'm pulling towards myself and I'm also pushing away. And what that is doing is just breaking up those muscle fibers. You have a sort of rougher side that's gonna help tenderize and pull out. But you see, I'm just rotating a bit and I'll continue to push out and pull towards me. And that's gonna create a nice wide flat surface. What you got going on over there, Rich? Okay, I love it. I'm gonna you know, start on um, the things that take the longest to cook, just like I'm telling our chefs in the kitchen. I'm making these Hasselback potatoes, right? Uh, very, very trendy, but not just trendy, absolutely delicious. So to make them, I've just skewered my potatoes. And then very, very finely, I'm just taking my knife and I'm sort of just making these little inserts in them so that what I'm doing is cutting into the potato so that they're gonna get nice and crispy, right? And I'm also gonna fry those potatoes. So a little bit of this clarified butter, like I said, on these trays. And I'm gonna pop my potatoes off of the skewer once I have them cut. Just put them in the oven and I'm frying potatoes in butter, which sounds and is absolutely delicious. Sounds so again, delicious. the oil that you're, that you're cooking in is going to flavor the dish. I love olive oil, but it's not the perfect oil for everything. You wanna cook in bacon fat, lamb fat. If you're roasting a chicken at home, save the drippings from that chicken, put it in a little ice cube tray, pop it in the freezer, cook your salmon in it the next day. That's how you win Next Level Chef. Okay, you're pounding off the schnitzel. I love that tip about pounding it away from you. Exactly. Super, super smart. Yeah, so it's not just about flattening it and hacking away. Uh, it's really about working with intentionality. Again, as we always tell our chefs, right? It's about everything has a purpose and a reason, right? So I want a nice flat round surface. So I'm working towards that. Okay. I'm over here. I'm going to make a little bit of coleslaw. I have some red cabbage and I'm, what I'm going to do is just really sort of shave some of this red cabbage for my slaw. So uh, a chiffonade, if you will, which means really, really thin like hair. I'm just gonna make a nice bright dish because this is gonna be a roasted pork chop over here, a pan fried pork chop. And what I want is a lot of this nice texture uh, coming through. You know, I like contrast of texture when I'm cooking. Something that's crispy, something that's soft, right? That's how you get to the next level. I love it. And you can like really go in and kind of build your perfect bite. So that's what I'm all about. Okay, so I have my cabbage in the bowl. Real quick, this is the simplest slaw that you're ever gonna make. I um, just have the red cabbage. You can use whatever color cabbage you want, but I think red cabbage and pork works really, really well. A little bit of sesame oil, a splash of vinegar. I'm gonna throw some cilantro in there as well. Um, of course, anytime I'm seasoning anything, I want, I want some salt and pepper in there. 
season from up high, get all of that in there. And that's very simple. That's my slaw. I'll toss in some cilantro. Another thing about cilantro I love, these stems are really, really delicious. Like you can oh, eat the it. stems, don't throw them away. Like there are some herbs, parsley sometimes can be a little bit chewy, but I'm just gonna take the whole, the whole pieces of the cilantro, throw it into my slaw. How are you doing over there, Naisha? I have my pork fat rendering here, and now I have my pork pounded out. And what I'm gonna do is create a little bit of a breading station, right? And this is something that whenever you're attempting to fry or uh, in fancy kitchens we call panne, uh, standard breading procedure. You want flour, right? We need the batter or whatever you're coating your protein or vegetable with. It needs something to stick to, right? If you went straight into egg wash and then into breadcrumbs, there'll be too much steam that creates a barrier and your batter won't have anything to stick to or create that glue. So what I wanna do is first uh, essentially go into a seasoned flour. I've seasoned my flour simply with some black pepper, a little bit of salt, and some smoky paprika. Then what I do is lightly toss that into my seasoned flour. I've simply whipped up some eggs. Again, I've added a pinch of salt, right? Seasoning as you go is very important. And it adds up at the end, right? So you don't have to add too much salt at the very end. So now, tossed my pounded out pork chop into, I've tossed my pork chop into my seasoned flour, and then I just lightly toss into my egg mixture. Love Tap it, on the it. side. And then I'm going to go into my panko. Right? Classic. And you wanna keep one hand for your wet, one hand for your dry, and that's what gives you the adherence, right? That's what's gonna allow our panko to stick onto the actual pork itself. And then I'm just gonna go straight into this beautiful cast iron pan. What do you got going on, okay, Rich? Yeah, so I'm gonna pan fry. I have uh, clarified butter or ghee. You can buy it in the store. Again, it's butter where the milk solids have been removed so that the butter's not gonna burn, but I'm still gonna get that buttery flavor. I have my bone in chop. I've seasoned it with salt, pepper, and I'm gonna add a little bit of five spice to it, which to me just reminds me of the holidays and the fall, and you have the cinnamon and the star anise and the fennel and the, and the clove, oh. all of that stuff in there. So I have my pork chop seasoned really, really well. When you're cooking, you want the meat to actually come to room temperature before you put it in the pan. Um, so a lot of people think it has to come right from the fridge. You don't want that. And then anytime we're cooking a, a piece of meat, a red meat steak, uh, a pork chop like this, it's got a big bone on it, you want to see this right here. Right, you see the smoke on a pan, you know that the pan's hot enough, and then you do a little bit of steak ASMR. Do you like ASMR? I'm a big fan. So ASMR, a little bit like this. this. Steak ASMR, there it Love is, that. like a sizzling steak in a pan. So now I'm gonna cook that, I have my slaw, I got my potatoes in the oven, and uh, you're cooking your schnitzel, uh, I'm cooking my pork chop, uh, I'm gonna make a quick sauce. Are you doing a sauce over there? Yeah, so I've dropped my pork chop into my uh, shallow fry, right? That's really the important thing is uh, different ways to approach frying or uh, you know, cooking different styles of protein, right? This has more spices on it. Uh, you don't want as much oil. You want some coloration. Um, this, I want a little bit more of that sort of frying vibe or technique. And again, every opportunity for flavor. So as my breadcrumbs start to caramelize around the outside or turn a little bit of that golden brown delicious color, I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, of a hard herb, right? So thyme, uh, oregano, rosemary. These are examples of hard herbs. And again, with that pork fat that's just hanging out, rendering off to the side, essentially making a chicharron, um, this is another flavor opportunity to season the oil, right? Every opportunity in cooking is uh, a chance for flavor, right? So simply going in, turning over that pork chop, and, uh, and then I'm just gonna baste it a little bit, right? Because I really want some nice, even golden brown color. I don't want my oil too hot, right? Because I don't want that pork to seize up too much, right? So I just want nice, and a good indicator is really the small bubbles, right? That's what's gonna tell you how hot your oil is. You wanna look at the bubbles, right? How's your pork, chef? My pork chop is ready to sort of flip over here. How do you know that it's ready to flip? How do you know? You look at it. You just gotta look at it. Is it golden brown and delicious? It's absolutely golden brown and delicious. I'm gonna flip it over. And as it's gonna finish cooking in the pan, similar to what Naisha's doing over there, what I wanna do now is I started it in the clarify butter, which isn't gonna burn, but as I'm getting ready to finish this chop, I'm gonna throw some butter in the pan, and I'm literally gonna throw it in a pan because 
Naisha, this is what I do when I'm home. Yeah, okay, you backed away, which is really, really smart, but you gotta be, you gotta get, you gotta get the butter toss going. So bad, so bad, but I got one in there. I got one in there. Hard herbs, right in the pan, and then it's gonna be base, 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 just like you're doing. I love that, Just chef. like you're doing, base, Amazing. base, base. That's one of, that was one of my favorite parts of cooking on the line, is the base. Right, it wasn't throwing butter in the pan. No, that too. I mean, whenever there's an opportunity for sports and activities, I'm a big fan. Um, so I'm actually just going to serve my uh, pork schnitzel with a little potato salad. Really simple. Smooth Dijon mustard. Go crazy. You can use whole grain Dijon mustard if you would like. The world is your oyster. Good olive oil. As Chef Richard mentioned, different oils have different applications. So olive oil doesn't have as high of a smoke point. So I wouldn't want to start my pork chop by cooking with it. But I do want all of that beautiful, robust olive oil flavor in by way of a vinaigrette, right? So I'm going to toss some beautiful pre-cooked um, fingerling potatoes here with some really good high quality olive oil, some smooth Dijon mustard, a little bit of salt, and just some fresh dill. Right, I think uh, with potato salad, it's nice. And again, as Richard said, you don't need to go in with a fine tooth comb and pick out all of the stems. You know, some of those stems are delicious and add really phenomenal texture and flavor. Uh, and you don't need to go too fancy, right? I'm just doing whole potatoes here and really just gonna toss this together with some acid coming from my lemon juice. Okay, I How love doing, that. Chef? We're doing good. So my pork top's just about done. That's gonna rest, which is really important. Maybe not as much for the schnitzel, but definitely for a chop that's on the bone. You want it to rest as long as it cooks, right? You know who told me that? Gordon Ramsay. Can you believe it? Gordon Ramsay, that's a Gordon Ramsay thing. I'm gonna make my sauce. This is one of my favorite simple sauces. Pork chops and applesauce Yum. works really, really well. But I'm gonna take applesauce and a little bit of white miso, which is salty. It's got a lot of uh, umami to it. And it's gonna be white miso, yellow mustard, and then uh, some applesauce, right? So literally three things that are in containers. Uh, and there it is. This is the glaze for my pork chop. It's really, really simple. Mustard, yeah. applesauce, miso, all things that I know work incredibly well with pork. You're just basty, basty, basty over there. It looks great. My yes. pork is totally done now. Love it. So pull that out and let it rest, like I said. And again, the basting is really just to provide even color, right? I, I've reached a very beautiful peak um, expression of that golden brown and delicious we eat with our eyes. This side is a little bit less color on it, so it's an opportunity to get the very beautiful side out of the oil, and I'm really just essentially cooking one side, right? That's really the point of the basting, is to develop that color and also cook the pork and raise the temperature on the inside as well. Okay, there it is. I have my mustard glaze. It's gonna go just right on top of this pork. And this is gonna be one, it's a glaze, but it's also the sauce for this. Ooh, I love that. I love the flavor of Dijon mustard and miso together. It's me too. I mean, oh, it's, it's, so you know what I love about it too? And, and listen, we've cooked competitively before. 100%. Everyone at home, you're also cooking competitively. Maybe you don't have a platform dropping in your kitchen, but you gotta get food on the table in less than 30 minutes, right? Absolutely. Uh, find things that work really, really quickly. In this case, again, it's that pork chop, it's applesauce, and it's miso and it's right there on my plate. You're going to the plate. Wow, our timing, we're syncing up. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull my pork chop out and really the most important thing when frying is to season directly when it comes out. You really want that salt to go inside and flavor when the oil's hot. In plating this dish, really simple. Just a simple potato salad. I love with schnitzel to serve it with a fresh slice of lemon. Um, really helps cut through the fattiness of the, uh, the richness coming from the pork. And I don't want to overcomplicate this, right? Slice the potatoes down if you'd like. Um, this is the kind of dish I love to serve family style. All right, I love that. And we're kind of going the same way here. This is how I'm plating, especially when I'm at home. I want to respect all of the things that I cooked. I have my pork chop and sauce right over here. I have my Hasselback potatoes. And then, of course, because we don't want the cold item to get, to get warm right before I'm finished, I'm going to just do a mound of this slaw Yum. right next to my pork chop, get a little height on there. Again, I love the fact that there's a stem in there. That's one of my favorite things to eat in the world over there, any sort of schnitzel. Oh, I can't wait till you try it. Oh my so gosh. yeah, I'm just gonna slice this down a bit. Uh, again, I'm serving this one family style, so it gives everyone an opportunity to eat this straight out of the fryer, right? I don't want anything to get, have an opportunity to chill down too much. Uh, you wanna rest a little bit. Again, very important seasoning directly when it comes out of the hot oil. And so this will go on, simply plated, 
And why not use those crispy herbs, right? Yes. Nothing goes to waste. So just finishing with some beautiful crispy herbs. And of course, the fresh slice of lemon. Look at these two absolutely delicious versions of pork right there. All right, there we go. Your pork schnitzel. My pork with a blaze glaze. A blaze glaze. I kind of want to trade. That's how you make a next level dish. To get ingredients and more details on the recipes from today, check the description below. And be sure to subscribe for more episodes of Next Level Kitchen.